This is Pastor Nathan Willard at Anki United Church of Christ. It is Thursday afternoon. It's late in the day. I don't know why I waited this long to do our uh, daily commentary, but uh, here it is, and we're here together out by the rhubarb patch. And as I said, we're moving along. We'll get through the first uh, chapter. So we can get into the second chapter, which is the one that's got a lot of stuff in it that we really need to talk about next week. But and we continue to set up this letter. We continue to set up, and uh, Peter, the author of First Peter, continues to challenge us, uh, to challenge us a- into saying, hey, what's going on in our lives? You know, what are the things you need to prepare for yourself, and why do you see challenges around you? Um, why uh, do you see oppression, maybe, or why do you see that your life is more difficult? So let's set it up. Uh, First Peter uh, 2. Uh, uh, chap- this is chapter two. Sorry, the good stuff gets in chapter three. G- uh, chapter two. Therefore, get all, uh, get rid of all ill will and all deceit, pretense, envy, and slander. Instead, like a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the word. Nourished by it, you will grow into salvation, since you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now you are coming to Him as as to a living stone. Even though this stone was rejected by humans, from God's perspective, it is chosen, valuable. You yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Thus it is written in Scripture, Look, I am laying a cornerstone in Zion, chosen, valuable. The person who believes in him will never be shamed. So God honors you who believe. For those who refuse to believe, though, this is the stone that the builders tossed aside. The stone that the builders tossed aside has become a capstone. This is a stone that makes people stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Because they refuse to believe in the word, they stumble. Indeed, this is the end to which they were appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession. You have become this people so that you may speak of the wonderful acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his amazing light. Once you weren't a people, but now you are God's people. Once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And there's a lot of sort of common um, uh, uh, traditional language here. This royal priesthood language, uh, this idea that you are chosen people, that you are the inheritors of this tradition. All of this um, is the language that brings you to remind you, if you're part of the Christian community, that you're part of something greater than yourself. That you're part of a greater tradition, uh, that you're part of this uh, Christian tradition that goes back, and that you are chosen and worthy. It, it, it's a, a supporting word that bucks you up, especially when things are rough. At the same time, you know, when, when you're feeling down, this language that, for those who don't believe it's become a capstone, is a, a, an explanation for why they might be getting to you. Uh, that these people, especially who are not like you, why it is they might be oppressing you. It, it, I don't know if it's true or not. Um, certainly it's said a few times. Um, but it's that warning saying, hey, look, if people don't think about the broader picture like we are, um, then they're going to stumble and they might, in fact, have deceit in their mind. They might oppress you. Um, and so we're looking here that God is honoring us. And I think as we're, we're talking about this, that this very opening passage, there's what it is that we are looking for in our lives. Get rid of all ill will and all deceit, pretense, envy, and slander. And so like a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the word. Uh, this idea that we, we cling to so many things um, in our lives that we, we can't let go of. We cling to so many things that cause us to want to run other people down. And... It's hard for all of us. It's hard for me to look around and not envy other people. And I'm sure it's hard for many of you too. And there's a difference between recognizing sort of structural things that we need to work on and change in the world uh, and envying um, uh, someone else for what they have. It's that envy that kind of eats away at you because you can't ever really do anything about it. When you look around and say, hey, we should all work together for justice and in solidarity, that's not envy and that's not slander. Um, When you run someone down, uh, because of who they are or um, uh, because uh, uh, that you don't like them or you feel threatened by them, that's, that's very different. It's a very different thing. And so this is our reminder to always be careful of ourselves, to always sort of remember the stories of other people and not to envy them, not to uh, slander them, and certainly not to try to deceive one another, but so that we can come and look at ourselves in the mirror and say, hey, what are the, what's the work we are doing today to try to build about this sovereign realm of God we claim to be building? What's the work that we can do today out in the world? And how is it um, that we can help one another and continue to be uh, the, the building stones uh, on top of Jesus' capstone, or to the sides, I guess, of Jesus' capstone? 
This is Pastor Nathan Willard at Inca United Church of Christ signing off for this week. We will be back next Monday as we get into obedience and household codes in 1 Peter. And this is the stuff that you always go, huh, when you read. <laughs>